welcome to Smart. Hey, Mark, what are you doing? Are you having a car boot set? No, I just brought my stuff with me. Oh, I can see that. What's it for? Well, I went to an exhibition of Islamic art, you see, and they do portraits of people surrounded by all their possessions. Ah, so you're going to do a still life of yourself? Uh, sort of. Look, I'll show you. I've done a picture of myself here, you see, and I'm going to surround it by all my favourite things. Cool. What am I going to do? Oh, what do you see? I've done a picture of you too. Ah! And I've cut out some objects that I thought you might like. All right, so I just stick these on? No, 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 you've got to draw them, you see. Oh. That's why I brought my stuff in, so I can use it as reference. Cool. I'll start on my scooter. Little handbag. I like the way all my stuff's pink. You've done well there. Well, I thought it was very girly. <laughs> There's my little scooter. Let's do a bit of a bike then. There you go. Um, what else was there? There's the. Uh, uh, I guess. A bit of a dog. No. Uh, just let's have his little legs. Wee wee. Okay. Just do little sort of rough drawings. Just rough out. Yeah, they've got to be perfect. Uh, oh. Shoes, ideal. Right, I'm sort okay. of done. Right now, the next stage is to actually cover these areas here in tissue paper and PVA glue. I'll just show you, look. So what you do here, the areas that you've just drawn, if you just put a bit of glue on. Yeah. See, See, so what you do now is just sit it on top and sort of scrunch it up. The trick is we're trying to get some sort of relief going on of the overall ah. design. I'm getting the hang of this now. Yeah, well, actually, Curse, what I did to save a bit of time is I already did one for you and one for me. Ah, there you go. you've done a better dog on there for me. <laughs> Thank you. So now what do we do then? They're slightly bumped up. That's right, raised. We're going to paint now on top of the dry tissue paper, you see. So colour them in? Colour them in. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So, let me start off with my face. Mm -hmm. bit, of, bit of yellow for my hair. I'm having yellow hair as well. <laughs> Not surprisingly. <laughs> Look at your hair. It's worked really well. Ah, oh, I'm getting into this. Now, you see, you've got to paint every object. So, what I did, Kirst, mm. see, I thought ahead. I'm good. <laughs> I actually painted I one for you. Just into that. <laughs> <laughs> one for you, one for me. Ah! It does take a bit of time, so I didn't want to rush it. That's perfect. So, what now? Is that finished? We've got to decorate it now, you see. Give it that sort of glitzy effect, you know? Oh. So get a gold or a silver marker pen and just put little bits of detail in there. Just makes it look a little bit more special. Am I going to get to finish this stage? Is there any point me starting? Well, to tell you the truth, Curse, actually, I'm going to have to stop you there. No, of course <laughs> you are. <laughs> of course you are, yeah? Yeah. around my shoes and then on there. That looks lovely. I actually done a better job than me. Thanks. Oh, well done. This looks great. Well, can I keep it? Of course you can. Thank you very much. You must have worked really hard on these. Hard work. Story of my life.
Wild Life Mark Leeds. Are you enjoying that? Yeah, it's just thinking of floating myself on the stock market. It's upside down. And I could use it for my mate. Thank you very much, because I'm going to make a cityscape from newspaper. Because have you ever noticed, when you look at the newspaper, it's in columns, which actually look like buildings. And what I'm going to do, because I'm going to make the city, I'm going to do my buildings from the business section of the paper. So this is all the stocks and shares. I'm going to cut that out. It makes a great building. And because that's very, very tiny, tiny writing that I've got there, I could put that in the background as though it was really in the distance. So all you need to do is look at the paper, see what kind of things you can make. Look at this weather map I've got here. If I drew a cloud on like that, I could have that cut out and pop that on my picture as well. So I've cut loads of bits and bobs out. And I'm going to start sticking them on now. Let's start with some buildings. There we go. This is all from the business section, so they're my city buildings in the background, like that. And the other thing I've done is I've cut out short little strands, and if I just stick that in, you can see what happens. I cut off at an angle there so that it gives the building a sense of perspective, which works really well. Let me show you on this bigger building like that just makes it look a little bit more 3D when I do it. And let's have a towery type building there. The crossword was really cool because that looks like windows. So what I've done is a kind of restaurant type building. I thought it could be a bit of a restaurant in the sky that you sometimes get. So there's the bit for that. Quite dark as though it's a dark tower. The darker buildings I've got in the foreground here work quite well. This looks like a block of flats and because people would live there rather than office workers go in that building, I've cut it out of the TV section, which is nice. And there's another shares building look made from the graphs in the business section. And finally, some clouds that I cut out so that if you kept doing that, eventually you'd get to the point where your cityscape looks like this. And you see what I said about all of the office buildings are made from the business section and the other buildings are just made from nice bits and bobs. That works really well, that pale blue, doesn't it? All it needs now is a lovely frame. Oh, cursed. That's the business section. <laughs> hey, I've seen another great cityscape in today's gallery. Come have a look. Ooh. And here it is, cursed. Look. Oh, yeah. Luge has done a really nice collage of a cityscape using torn bits of paper. Very clever. Very nice. And look at Priya's picture of a castle. There's so much going on there. There must be a story behind that. Now look at Ruth's very delicate sketch here. It's clever, though, because the black and the white add a real contrast. Yeah, it's really bold. Now, Jake's created this sunset picture using hundreds of dots. Look at Zara's fairy tale castle in my favourite colour, pink. Now, Claire's also used dots to create her picture, but she's used watercolour. Look at this. Richard has done a very successful Picasso face. Now, Katie's cartoon's absolutely bonkers. I love this chat with a big foot, and somebody's just offering up a subtle... <laughs> <laughs> My favourite part of Sabina's picture is the tree. Whose are those eyes in the tree? Ooh. Every picture we show in our gallery gets themselves the smart sketchbook and the pencil set. Yep, sadly we can't return any of your artwork, but do keep sending it in because we love looking at it. The address will be shown at the end of the show, so get your pen and paper ready. Hey, you know what? Art can be a shadowy business sometimes. I'd watch what you're saying. I'm bigger than you. <laughs> Mark, what are you doing? I'm just having a serious experiment with the light and dark. Oh, really? Are mm. you sure? Actually, that's just given me a smart idea. Uh, mm. Can these guys come? So what's the idea, Kirst? Well, I thought we could make a proper shadow puppet theatre. And since you like toys so much, you can do the puppets, I'll make the theatre. Great! <laughs> 
going to use this box for my theatre, so let's open it out. <laughs> now, I need to lose one side. Now I need to lose these two outer flaps. Now, to make the puppets, I thought we'd do a couple of caricatures of me and Kirsten. Just looking at this picture here, I thought I'd pick out our most prominent features. You see, I've got spiky hair, but big muscles. Kirsten, on the other hand, she's got, um, well, very wavy hair and a massive mouth. That's it. Right, next thing I need is a hole here so we can see the puppet. So I've got to be a bit careful with this. Fingers out the way whilst I poke my scissors through. Now, to make the puppets move, you've got to separate the different body parts, OK? So let's move the head, the arms and the waist. So now I'm going to draw each separate body part onto a piece of black card. Next thing I need to do is put some greaseproof paper over this hole so we can achieve a shadow effect. That's it. I wonder how Mark's getting on. Theatre's done. <laughs> they look brilliant. Good on oh, Can I help you fit them together? I love talking, me! Hey, she's a lot of our muscles. Let's try them out. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kirsten. Just got in from a busy day attending film premieres. Have you been having a quiet day in again? Ha! No. Actually, Busted came round for lunch. Shame you missed them. <laughs> That's rubbish! I've been having lunch with them all day! That's utter rubbish! They were here all along! No, they weren't! Yes, they were! No, they weren't! Yes, they were! Oh, I, 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 Stop! I, I, get off! <laughs> Oh, those two are so childish. Oh, I know. When will they grow up? Oh dear, we should definitely get that lamp fixed. You need a light to read a bedtime story and you need a light to make this next idea work. I'm going to do painting, but not with paints, with oils, cooking oils, like this lovely sunflower oil, very light colour, and the picture I'm going to paint is a sunflower. So I'm just going to dot on the centre first of all. Now make sure you put newspaper down if you're going to do this because it does tend to seep through and if you use thicker paper it doesn't spread as much like that. Now let's get some petals. So you see that the picture actually tells the story of the oil that I've used. Looking lovely. Let's just do a circle around there and a bit of a stalk and a leaf. And there's my sunflower made from sunflower oil. Let's pop that into a frame like so. Now, the next one I've started is on this lovely red chilli oil. Very hot oil, so the picture I'm doing is a hot one. I've started painting my volcano. All I need to add are the spurts of fire coming out the top 
there. This is thinner paper that I'm using so that the oil spreads even more. Let's have some cascading down and over like that. See, that's all starting to come out and dribble along. And what would make this picture really, really hot is if I used red hot paper. If we just dim the lights, you can see here's one that I've done earlier. Look at that hot volcano on chilli oil there. And then I started experimenting with lots of other oils. The Leaning Tower of Pisa looked great. And of course, the Italian feel there, I've done that on olive oil. And right at the end on the green paper, that's a walnut tree. And can you guess? Yep. I did that with walnut oil. So you can really experiment. Look, oh. I've had a go myself. Ah, don't tell me you did that with engine oil. Correct. You see, to remind me of my train journey to Scotland. Oh, what did you go there for? I went to do some cartooning with Lewis and Nicole up in Dundee. Ooh, nice. That whiffs a bit, actually. Hi, Lewis. Hi, Nicole. Now, I've got your letter saying you're having trouble with your comic characters. Is it the characters we have trouble with? It's just putting them in the story. Oh, I see. Now, what you got, then? I've got Trendy Trudy. You've got Trendy Trudy? What you got, Lewis? I've got a picture of my superhero called Mega Man. Mega Man. Well, you know what? I have trouble turning doodles into a story, too, so let's go and ask the experts at the Beano. Come with me. <laughs> That's a good question. What makes a good story? You really need five things. First of all, you need a good character with a name that sums up what the character's about. You need a good beginning, a middle, and an end. And most of all, you need humour, especially at the end when we call the twist, when, when there's a surprise ending. So how do you know what to make this story about? Well, that's really what you call the theme. And, and our scriptwriters look at the newspapers, they think of things that have happened to them, they watch the television, and, and that's where they get their ideas from. What if you can't think of a theme, though? Well, that does sometimes happen, so if you're really stuck, that I sometimes open a dictionary and just look at a word and maybe that will inspire me to, to a story, a comic story. Ah, oh, that's a very good tip. Well, we've got our characters, but we've been struggling to put them into a story, so um, if you could give us a theme, could you help us put them into a story? No, let me think. It has to be something that everybody knows about. Uh, what could it be? What about the birthday? Ah. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Nice. Hmm. Well, it looks like our stories are in the bag. Mega Man's making a mega birthday cake. We've got Trendy Trudy, who's having a bit of a shopping mix-up. And uh, Chopper McNabb, who's got an all-action birthday surprise. So our stories are ready. Oh, you must be Dave the Artist. Hello. Hello. Oh, oh my goodness. What's oh, that's <laughs> lovely. Now, I understand okay. you're a little bit of a dab hand at this. Yes, I've been drawing the comics for over 40 years now, and... Uh... Thoroughly enjoying it. So I've grown up with your artwork. Yes, that's what I thought, isn't it? <laughs> I draw the Bass Street Kids every week. In fact, I've drawn it for 1,728 weeks. How do you get your characters to look the same? Well, you actually look for little props, you know, like teacher has a mortar board, head has a coat the gown, so he's recognisable. Mm. So you identify him all the time, even though the face is not exactly. You need little props to help you and keep them simple. Well, Dave, we've met the editor, we've got our stories planned. We just want to know if you can help us with our artwork. Oh, sure, yeah. His name's Chopper McNabb. Yeah. I thought he'd be like this sort of um, accident-prone sort of stuntman. Yeah, that's an ideal spot there for the title, Chopper McNabb, just was fit in there beautifully. All right. And then I'd introduce you to the character. A greeting I said to you I'll tell you what, our drawings are looking great. I think it's time to colour in. Dave, it must take you ages to colour in all your uh, comics. Oh, yes, we have artists here who colour in specially for us, you know, and it's now been done on computer. Do you mean people actually get paid to colour in? Oh, Kirsten, I love that job. Um, do you think they'd uh, colour in our artwork? Oh, yeah, I'll certainly arrange that for you. Oh, lovely. Come on, guys. Ta-da! Ewan, we've had a great day. What do you think? I think there's a fantastic, wonderful, uh, and looks like you've really enjoyed doing it. But there is one thing missing, though. Oh, what's that? Well, today's been a, a bit like a comic strip, really. I mean, at the beginning, you came in and you met me. Then, in the middle, you met Dave Sutherland, the artist. And then, at the end, you brought me these fantastic drawings. That's right. So what's missing, then? The joke <laughs> 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 Oh, my.
Mark, I think you've got your just dessert fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, look, these are the cartoons that we did. Trendy Trudy. Yippee, I can go shopping. In the shop. Which bag is mine? Later that day at home. Oh, no, I've got the wrong shoes. No! Mega Man! I'll open my presents once I've made my cake. After he'd made it, wah! An indestructible cape. Cool. Yippee! This is fun. Whoa, no, I'm stuck. I put in cement instead of flour. <laughs> Chopper McNabb, the all action dad. Oh, hum. Oh, I like it. Oh, well. At least I had a birthday with a bang. <laughs> Oh, Mark, Lewis and Nicole's are brilliant, and yours isn't half bad either, but I never really think of comics as proper art. Oh, well, that's where you're wrong. See, one of the most famous American artists was a big fan of comics. In fact, we wondered whether an exhibition of his work would convert some viewers who didn't like going to galleries. And did it? Well, let's find out. <laughs> We're at Hayward Gallery in London. Smart is trying to check out an art exhibition to see what we'll think. We like art, but we don't like art galleries. We can find it boring. Let's see if Smart could change our minds. is by Roy Lichtenstein. It's much cooler than I expected it to be. Hello, 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 hello. He first became publicised in the 1960s when he first started taking pictures of comics and enlarging them into bigger pictures. Like this one. In this picture, Lichtenstein has used bold outlines and primary colours. He has also put words into the picture so it looks just like something out of a comic. It's just then use the image duplicator to make these pictures look big. You put the small picture in here and the big picture will be shown on the wall so you can trace it on bigger piece of paper. Lichtenstein used dots in his painting. The more dots he used, the darker the colour. Close up, you can really see the dots. But further away, the lips just look pink. This still life is quite flat looking and comic like. He's paid a lot of attention to the pattern and the reflection, rather than the objects looking real. That was Lichtenstein, what do you think? I like how Lichtenstein used dots in his paintings. It was all right, but I prefer more realistic art. I like the one picture because it was colourful and comic-like. I like it when we were walking around the gallery. Thanks, Mark. See. Ah, three out of four isn't bad, is it? They may become regular gallery visitors yet. Ah, you never know. You know, I'd like to have a go at Lichtenstein's technique. I thought you might say that. Check out my image projector. Hey, look, it's Chopper McNabb. Yeah, and Mark, it's time to get sponging. Sponging? So we're going spotty, Mark. But they've got to be quite uniform spots, yeah, though. Yeah, not we? random. <laughs> oh. Can I go over the words? Yep. Uh oh. <laughs> you put your foot in the blue on your new shoes. <laughs> oh, look, I just put me off there. <laughs> Fancy doing a bit of a dance there? <laughs> <laughs> I think 
Yes, don't curse. I think it is. Let's turn the projector off. Great. Ta-da! That's rubbish. Ah, uh, hang on a minute. I've got a plan. Bring it down, boys! Well, that's one massive success. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Oh, is that a spot on your face? Where? Ha, there. <laughs> How am I supposed to squeeze that? Bye. Yeah, bye. Come here. Don't forget you can send your pictures to us here at Smart, PO Box 5053, London W12 6AW. Fact sheets for today's show can be found on the website bbc.co.uk slash cbbc. For the best in art, stick with Smart.